Recent studies suggest that nearly two-thirds of all people, regardless of age or gender, feel lonely at least some of the time. One British supermarket has created talking tables in their store cafe as a way to foster connection between people. Those looking for human interaction simply seat themselves at the table designated for that purpose, joining others or indicating a desire to be joined. Conversation ensues, providing a sense of connection and community. The people of the early church were committed to sharing connection too. Without each other, they would likely have felt very alone in the practice of their faith, which was still new to the world. Not only did they devote themselves to the apostles' teachings to learn what following Jesus meant, they also met together in the temple courts and broke bread in their homes for mutual encouragement and fellowship. We need human connection. God designed us that way. Painful seasons of loneliness point to that need. Like the people of the early church, it's important for us to engage in the human companionship of our well-being requires and to offer it to those around us who also need it. Amen. Maybe the Lord made us for community. You know, even when he, remember in the Garden of Eden, when he made Adam and he created the animals, he told Adam to name all the animals, but he saw that Adam was what? Lonely. And so he made him a helpmate. So God knows we need one another. We need touch. We need connection. We need talking face to face and smiling and laughing and sharing with one another. Or crying. Or crying with one another. Exactly. We need one another. I saw on Facebook this week where um, this a man had been in, I guess, Afghanistan and had lost one of his legs, I believe, or maybe both of them. I can't remember. But anyway, he came back from over there and, of course, with PTSD and so he started counseling others coming back that had PTSD. So he was a mental health counselor. And he'd been there for many years. Then when COVID set in and we were told to isolate, he ended up committing suicide mm -hmm. because he couldn't stand the isolation. So we were meant to be with one another and to fellowship with one another. So I'm just so
God's house today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Um, and all those who join us by way of Facebook and YouTube and the Internet, uh, we welcome you to this uh, Memorial Day service. And we want to really remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice that we could come together, meet together like this, and worship the Lord and hear His truth. Um, they laid their lives on the line and gave their lives that we might have the freedom to do this. Seems like people are trying to take some of that freedom away lately. Amen? Amen. But, uh, just to give you a rundown of what we plan on doing, we're still having um, spacing and stuff like that. To, but uh, uh, my plan is now the first Wednesday night in June, we'll have Wednesday night services. Following Sunday, the first Sunday in June, we'll have to go back to small group studies. All right? So that's our plan right now as far as, as, far as I'm going to open everything up. With. And we'll also start taking up children's offering that first Sunday in June again, too. I'm going to get these kids involved in it. Um, I feel like they need that. Amen? So be much in prayer for those families that uh, uh, have lost loved ones by way of military sacrifice. Our all our veterans that gave their lives for uh, our, our freedom. And also, I wanted to say thank you to all the ladies and everybody that fixed and helped out with the uh, uh, feeding uh, Ellen and the girls and all that happened with family. Uh, continue to pray for them. Lift them up into you. Bring them prayer. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, for the blessing of Thank you, Lord, for all those who willingly placed their lives on the line that we might have the freedom to worship. Lord, most of all, we remember the sacrifice that you made, that you gave yourself willingly, that we might have forgiveness of our sin and an eternal life in heaven. Lord, I pray today that you'll be with this service, be with every part of it. Lord, may your Holy Spirit infiltrate this place and just overpower all of us. And Lord, just fill us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet with your precious spirit. Lord, let us lift up praise and honor and glory to you. And if there's one here that's lost or this one that's lost, I pray God that today will be the day that comes to save the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Why do you think they want us to remember things? So we don't forget. So we don't forget. That's exactly right. We will remember. This is a song. I don't want you to ever forget what the Lord has done for you. And let's remember those also who willingly gave their lives for our freedom. Let's stand and sing.
choir comes down. Or does the praise team come down? Everybody's here.
go through your tank room, just offer them. If you receive them on behalf, we pray God now that you would take it and multiply it. Lord, help us to use it wisely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's stand and sing our memorial, Christian memorial song. For what the Lord did for us, the old rugged cross. Oh, yeah.
that oath of office did not cease when I got out of service. That oath still applies. All, all both, both domestic and foreign, uh, were defended against that. And I continue, I will continue to do that. There are many conflicts, struggles, and wars that are recorded in the scriptures. Because this God has periodically he's employed men of great military statute to promote his will. Uh, men like Abraham, Moses, Caleb, uh, Joshua, the judges, the kings, and I'm not going to get that out of the way. I can't sit down anyway. <laughs> so, um, military people usually are well disciplined and can effectively engage the enemy. And today we honor those men in our U.S. military who gave their life at the search. They had courage, loyalty, obedience, leadership. They are the kind of warriors that we need in our lifetime today. In our lifetime, we've seen many conflicts. You saw Vietnam, you saw North Korean conflicts, you saw Kuwait, Bosnia, uh, Afghanistan, I could go on and on, Iraq. Right? Um, one of the shortest wars in history was Desert Storm. That was, the general was General Norman Schwarzkopf. Everybody remember, anybody remember how many days that war lasted? 100 days, that's all. I mean, 100, excuse me, 100 hours. 100 hours, that's the shortest war it's ever been. The longest war that we've ever had is still being raged today. It's gone on for thousands of years and it's still in progress. It began in the Garden of Eden. The conflict is for the highest treasure, and that is the souls of men. Genesis 14, 21 says this, Then the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the people, but take the possession for yourself. They wanted the people. Make no mistake about it. We're involved in a spiritual warfare. For the souls of men, our enemy, the devil, and his legions are fighting as fiercely as they can to, to entrap men so that they can keep them in for eternity in the halls of hell. And God has left us here to engage that in men. Whether you believe it or not, when you got saved, you joined the army. You joined the Lord's army. And so we're going to look at some general orders. Life involves struggle. It involves conflict. It involves warfare. We think too many times we act like we're at a picnic. This is not a pick. This is this. This is where you get spiritually fed to go outside and do the battle. Amen. Amen. And it is a battle. Uh, listen to what the Word of God says. First Peter chapter two verse eleven says, "Dear friends, I urge you as strangers and temporary residents to abstain from fleshly desires that war against you." It says also in Second First Timothy two twelve, "Fight a good fight for the faith. Take hold of eternal life that you were called to and made a good confession about it in the presence of many witnesses." And of course, I read Second Timothy chapter. 2 verses 1 through uh, 4 to you. There you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. We're to teach others how to teach the Word of God to people and how to spread the Word of God. Sharing suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in the concerns of civilian, civilian life. He seeks to please the recruiter. Our commission, each Christian, is enlisted in the God's army. There's three things I want you to remember. Our commission is the great commission. We are to go out and, and, and spread the gospel. And our orders are to evangelize the world. And our resources are the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, prayer, and the church. Those are the resources that we use to carry out our orders as we were commissioned by God to do. When he left, he told the disciples, and he said, go out and make disciples of all men. And so we are to go out and spread the gospel. Now, for everyone that's ever entered the military service, <laughs> when you step off that boat, uh, off boot camp, off the bus in boot camp, you are given 11 general orders of the U.S. Armed Forces and 30 minutes to memorize them. Yep, I said 30 minutes to memorize them. Because you're going to be, you're going to be asked. <laughs> you're going to be asked to quote them. Uh, They'll say, say, oh, what's your, what's your fifth general order? You have to roll it off, or else you're going to do, you're going to run laps, or push-ups, or jumping jacks. I want to, talk, I want, I want to go over these 11 uh, for the armed forces, and then I'm going to show you how they fit into our commission, our general orders that God has given to the church. First one says, say, take charge of this post and all the government property in view. Number two, walk by post in military matter, keep you always on the alert, observing everything that takes place within sight of you. Number three, to report all violations of orders I'm instructed to enforce. Four, to repeat all calls for our post more distant from the guardhouse than my own. Number five, to quit my post only when properly relieved. Well, you better remember that one. 
Number six, to receive, obey, and pass on to the sister who believes me all orders from the commanding officer, the field officer of the day, officer of the day, officer and petty officer of the watch. These are, these are Navy orders. Number seven, to talk to no one except in the line of duty. Number eight, to give the alarm in case of fire or disorder. Number nine, to call the petty officer of the watch in any case not covered by instruction. Number ten, to serve all officers, all colors, and standards not set to pay. Number 11, to be a special watch for the night during the time for challenging, to challenge all persons on or near my post and allow no one to pass without proper authority. Now, this is how critical it becomes. You know these general orders. When they put you in the gas chamber, to learn to use uh, tear gas, they want you have, you have, you put in there, they let the tear gas come out, you've got on a gas mask, you have to take off that mask, breathe in the tear gas, and they will say, what's your 11th general order? Where at the time? And you have to quote that general order correctly, and then after that, give your name, rank, and serial number, and then you're allowed to put on the mask, clear the gas out the mask. <laughs> so you have to do it. Why are you choking the whole time? Why are you choking the whole time, right? So I'm going to say to you, these, these things, you, you, you know them, you learn them very quickly. It don't take 30 days more, I promise <laughs> you. learn them very quickly. Well, I think that the, every good <coughs> military application, whether it's Navy, Army, whatever, they have these general orders. I believe God gave general orders to the church. So we're going to take these general orders and look at how they apply to God's army today. Number one, take charge of your post. Our post is the world. This is your post. The whole world is your post. But Acts chapter 1, 8 says, but you will see power when the Holy Spirit is coming on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. In all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We are to witness to every lost person we come into contact with. Where it, says, where it is in the world, you come into contact with them, you are to share the gospel with them. Notice the depth of our post. It starts in Jerusalem. That's your hometown. It spreads out to Judea. That's your county. It then spreads to Samaria. That's your state and our county. And then it's to all the world. In other words, it starts at home and it keeps going. You can draw concentric circles. And keeps getting bigger and bigger. The whole world is your post. Take charge of your post, God said. Be, a, be an evangelist. Be someone who's looking for people to share the gospel with. Be someone who's conscious that men's soul, men are dying and their souls are going to hell without Jesus Christ. And God has left you in this world, on this post, to fulfill the orders that he gave you to evangelize the world. Um, the Lord's army, your entire world is the post. When you're in the military... You can go off post. <laughs> you know, the post is the BX or the PX or wherever you're at. That, that, that's the post. Yeah. Uh, see what got some Air Force Base is a post. Fort Bragg is a post. You can go off post. You can't go off your post as a Christian. Because wherever you go, you're still on post. You're still where you're supposed to be. Now you're supposed to be spreading the gospel. Number two. Let's see how number two works out. Walk your post in a military manner, keeping always on the alert. That means do it God's way. 1 Timothy 1.18 says this, Timothy, my son, I am giving you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies previously made about you, so that by them you may strongly engage in battle, having faith and good conscience. Some have rejected these and suffered the shipwreck of faith. You, as you walk your post in a military manner, you are to be on keen alert. Always looking at the dangers around you and recognizing, looking to see if there's anything out there that's going to obstruct you or prevent you from fulfilling your duties. As Christians, we're to walk the uh, post of the world. Always looking for those who need to hear the gospel and be ready to present it at a moment's notice. In addition, you need to be walking around being aware that the enemy may be trying to attack you or somebody else that's close by you. And as military, in military, if you see a threat, you're supposed to sound the alarm. Get people to come in there and help you out. And that's exactly what you do in Christian warfare. If someone is slipping, join that statement that you made today about the guy that lost his leg and wound up was a counselor and was doing fine because the isolation that's been created by this COVID-19 lockdown wound up taking his own life. Wouldn't it have been great if some Christian had recognized and even defied orders or defied illegal orders, <laughs> I believe, 
and counsel with him and talk with him and, gave, and just gave him an encouraging word. Picked up the phone and called him and gave him an encouraging word. That's what I'm saying. You need to be on the lookout. You need to be aware as you walk your post, as you're here. Watch and observe. Same is true for the Lord's army. You're, you're to have everybody. Listen, you're to have my back, and I'm to have your back. And we're to take care of one another. Number three, this will not be a long message today, I promise you. Because you can go to get something to eat today. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Number three, report all violations of orders you are instructed to enforce. One thing, when we were given orders in the U.S. Navy, we were expected to carry out those orders to the best of our ability. If something prevented us from carrying out those orders, we just didn't sit down and do nothing. We had to go tell somebody and let them know, I'm not able to carry out this order. I'm not able to complete the mission that you have given me. I'm not able to complete the assignment. I need some help. You know, it could be anything from your own folks, you folks be on duty, and you get you got sick. And you had to have somebody to relieve you. You had to go and let somebody know that you needed help. Report all violations of orders you're instructed to enforce. In other words, if you mess up, fess up. Confession. Confession is a vital part of the Christian life. 2 Corinthians 7 9 says, I now I rejoice not because you were grieved, but because your grief led to repentance. For you were grieved as God wills, so that you didn't experience any loss from us. You're expected to faithfully execute what God has asked you to do. If you can't do it and, and, and mess up, then just say, God be merciful for me and forgive me. Uh, and confess it up. Confession is good for the soul. God has given us orders. And we're faithfully following his command to the letter. When we fail to redo, do so, guess who you report to? The commanding officer. You don't have to go to anybody else. You go to the commanding officer and confess your sin. And I promise you, I've had some commanding officers in the military. God is a more forgiving commanding officer than any other one I had in the Navy. Amen? He is very, he is forgiving. The Navy many times was not quite that forgiving. Now, I didn't say there were consequences. If you mess up, you mess up. God forgives sin. Sometimes the consequences are still there. In the Navy, they didn't forgive you. And consequences would be even greater than, than, uh, than they were for, for not doing the duty. Listen, we will forgive our, he will forgive our failings or the consequences, the consequences may remain. In the military, to follow orders, often, to fail to follow orders often led to defeat. It will in the Christian life as well. Satan cannot have your soul, but he can rob you of the joy of your salvation if you don't mess up when you mess up. So order number four, to quit my post. I, I got this one out of line. So I quit my post only when properly relieved. Actually, that's number five. Don't ever quit until properly relieved. First Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my brothers, Dear brothers, be steadfast and movable, always excelling in the Lord's work, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain while on duty. At your post in the military, you are expected never to leave your post. You could get in serious trouble. I remember, and, uh, I remember one time I was on the USS Yellowstone, and there was a guy that uh, he was on duty. He was a messenger, messenger of death on that night, on that particular night. Now that's his post. He's supposed to stay there. They'd be addressed white. They'd be addressed white then. And he'd be, um, that was his post. Something happened, and for some reason, he decided that he needed to go home instead of staying at that post. It, not some, something in his family. But rather than going and talking to the officer of the deck to get permission, he just left. Hello. Now, folks, that. In a wartime situation, that would be desertion. And that's punishable by death. But he just left. You could never leave your post until you were properly relieved. At least, um, in the Lord's Army, you served in a particular area. God, man, God's got you right here at Tabernacle Baptist Church. I'm going to tell you this. You listen carefully. Don't leave your post unless God sends you relief. And God will let you know. Amen? Amen. Hello? Amen! This is your post right now. If you're a member of Tabernacle Baptist Church, that is your duty as his, at his command. And you're never to leave the post unless directed by him or getting his permission. All right? Many Christians have deserted their post without being properly relieved. It may have been 
they, they got discouraged, they got worn out, they got tired, they just felt like, they felt like giving up. You can't give up. I tell you what, if you're walking a week in the military, <laughs> you decide to give up, you better think again. Amen? Sometimes we need to think again when we like giving up on the Lord's work. Most important work you can ever do. Most important work. The military desertion during wartime is punishable by death. In Christ's army, you are in a constant state of war. Report all calls, number five, from section four. Report all calls from post more distant from the guardhouse than mine own. Galatians 6 2. Carry on one and carry one another's burdens, and this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Since those that, that are saved are in the army together, we are to support one another. If someone is having a difficulty competing in a task in the military, he was supposed to ask for help, ask for assistance. Say true in God's army. If you see a brother or sister that is suffering, you have the obligation to help them, and if you can't, you have the obligation to try and help find somebody that can help them. Amen? That's why we are deacons, are to check up on the people, see if they need anything. If they can't, if they can't take care of them, then you get somebody else to help them. That's all this is just about good, good common sense. Care for one another. Tabernacle Baptist Church, and I will give you credit, you're good at this. But we can all do better. Amen? Amen. We can all do better. Um, again, I commend the ladies all they did as far as helping Ellen and the rest of the, and the girls and the rest of the Hamlin family this, this week during the funeral services. That was a great meal that you had. Amen? And you'd be good. What did you do? You came together and you helped one another. You bore one another's burdens. That's exactly what we're talking about. Those of you that say, listen, get the prayer team together. You having trouble? You know somebody's having trouble? Call somebody get the prayer team together. Or get a work party assembled to sit with the task. I didn't know you were going to do this when I heard this message. That's exactly what we're talking about. Get a task force together. Take care of all the, the work that needs to be done. General order number six, to receive, obey, and pass on all orders from the commanding officer. Be a channel of God's truth. Matthew 22, 37 says this. He said unto the Lord, the Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. Second is life. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets depend on these two commandments. In Matthew 28, 18, then Jesus came here and said to them, All authority has been given me, given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the world. The military service man is given the authority to pass commands on to those that are underneath him, that serve under him. He must pass down that order coming from those in authority over him. Um, in the Christian army, we are to pass along the commands of God. That's what I said. We are to teach others. Although that we come in contact, the Word of God, we're to make disciples by encouraging them, lifting them up, and, and uh, in the Word of God, with the love of God. Not with a heavy hand, but with the love of Almighty God. You know, you can tell anybody in the world anything you need to tell them if they know you love them. But if you can't, if, if they don't know you love them, you can't tell them anything. So do it with the love of God. As His child, God has given you the authority to act as His representative to all those here on this earth. You have the power that God has given you. You have the Holy Spirit to guide you. You're to speak what he's given you to those he brings you in contact with. General order number seven. Talk to no one except in the line of duty. Now, when you're standing in the military post, people will come by and try to talk to you. I mean, it's human nature. But you're not to talk to anyone. You're on, you're on duty, and you keep your mind focused on what you're supposed to do. I think too many times. The Bible says, and, and listen, in 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, Therefore, whatever you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for God's glory. Give no offense to the Jew or the Greek or the church of God, just as I also try to please all people in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, so that they may be saved. In the military, you're not to become entangled with the affairs of civilian life. It says, if you're in a different world, in your own duty. Your duties, your responsibilities, your comrades are suddenly to alive. I've known several people that were in special operations. And one of the hardest things they have to do 
when they're shown a uh, uh, mission is to forget their failures. They literally told them, when you're over there in the midst of combat, don't be worried about your failure. It gets you healed. So they're not becoming involved in the things of civilian affairs. Well, I'll tell you something, church, sometimes we as church members and Christians get too involved with the things of the world instead of staying focused on the mission that God has given. Too many gods of God's soldiers have allowed themselves to become entangled with the affairs of the world. They seem to have forgotten that they're citizens of heaven deployed on a mission here on earth. You're right. Your citizenship is already in heaven if you're a child of God. He's just left you deployed on post. The mission is not at that, at that risk because they become so distracted and no longer focused on carrying out the orders that God gave us. Is this, is this, make, is this making everything applicable? Does it seem like it's applicable? Or is it? You can learn a lot from the military if you look at it. General order number eight, to give the alarm in case of fire or disorder. <laughs> Be a witness. 2 Corinthians 5.11 Therefore, because we know the fear of the Lord, we seek to persuade people we are completely open before God, and I hope we are completely open to your consciences as well. In a military sector, is to sound the alarm in case of fire. is to notify those that are in danger of fire and help them and assist them in getting out of the danger. <laughs> this is so easy. Make it applicable to the, to the Christian church. The Christian church is to sound the fire alarm to every sinner that there's a heaven to gain and the fires of hell to shun. And the only way to do you to show them the only way of escape is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And you sound that alarm so that everyone can hear it. We're providing them with the ways of escaping the flames by directing them to Jesus Christ. The sinner is supposed to say, go this way, and you can avoid the fire. We're supposed to say, run to Christ. And you can enjoy both avoid the fires of hell and enjoy the glories of heaven. Number nine, general order number nine. We call the officer to death in any case not covered by instruction. And again, I was in the Navy, I've got Navy general orders. The Army probably won't say call the officer to death. They probably say call the officer in charge. You know what it's talking about. James 1 5 says, Now if any of you lack wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and without criticizing, and it will be given to him. In service, I remember sometimes I was given an order to do something and, and maybe it wasn't explained to me correctly or, or completely, and I ran into a problem, I couldn't figure out how to do it. I had to, I had the privilege of going and asking somebody. I need some help. Explain this to me. Uh, and I can call the officer the deck and say, Sir, would you am I doing this correctly? And believe me, he'd tell me if I wasn't. In not a very polite way. But it was still my responsibility to ask. Now, in the service, we're all going to face times we had to make decisions on our own, but we had the ability to go seek help. In the Christian army, God has given us men and women who have been given hardships we have not encountered. When we run into that problem that we've never faced before, we seek godly wisdom and counsel. I was telling Joy the other night, I've been fortunate, and I'm just a little old country preacher at a beautiful country church that I love very much. But God has let me meet some people in my lifetime that have been my influencers. Men like Norman Geisler. Men like Dr. Jerry Falwell Sr. Uh, Harold Seiko. Uh, Zay Warner Wallace. Frank Cherry. And one of my really mentors that I enjoyed talking with at the Christian Apologetics Conference every time I went when he was down there. Just went to be with the Lord this week. Matter of fact, on Tuesday. And as I cried, went to be in the presence of the Lord. One of the greatest apologists I've ever heard. If you've never heard him, go on YouTube, Google Rabbi, and listen to some of his messages. He has a way of he has a way of taking something complicated and making it simple. And I like that. And I thank God. Those, these are men that I could look at and I could ask and for guidance and direction. I remember Dr. Bill Bradley when I first went into ministry. Well, I, I had to know my feet died. I run into things I don't know how to handle. I was new in ministry. I still, still run into things I don't know how to handle. But my responsibility is to ask the officer of the deck, someone that's above me, someone that's experienced this, how to handle it. Yours is the same thing. The preacher, I don't know how to handle that. Sure. Find somebody that does. 
got cold out. I remember, I remember the first ship conference I went to. And uh, he had a panel of Adrian Rogers, uh, Jerry Falwell, uh, Bader Smith, I don't know, there's a bunch of uh, big name preachers up there. And, and we could go and ask questions. You can give you a microphone. Well, that got, got lunch time. And uh, they took a break. But they said, Dr. Falwell was going to stay up here. had two big couple of chairs up there. Said, you can come up here and hear lunch time. You want to and talk to an individual. So I decided I stay around. So I went up to a nest. And you have to know Dr. He was a jerk to him. He would, he would look around. And he always hit you on the arm. Sometimes he hurt. And, uh, but I, I didn't read him. I said, Dr. Falwell, I've heard him, but I never read him. I said, Dr. Falwell, can I ask a question? He said, sure. I told him who I was and where I was from. And I said, uh, you've got all these things for him. You've got uh, the home for the animal, the home for the animal, un, unread mothers, and you've got, uh, you got the Liberty University, and you've got even home for alcoholics and, and you got the, 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 the parks and uh, the uh, camps and things. You got all this stuff going. And God is blessing you tremendously. And Dr. Paul, I just want one question. How did you do all this? Because you're not that dynamic a preacher. <laughs> and he was, I mean, he's a great teacher, great, but he wasn't that fiery, fiery preacher. And he punched me on the arm <laughs> and laughed. And uh, he said, so he told me, he said, well, God called me to do something. He said, and I don't know how to do it. I find somebody that knows how to do it. He said, they called me to start Liberty, Liberty College. I didn't know how to do it. We got to work with Springfield did, so I called him. I was called to start even home college. I didn't know anything about that, but uh, uh, I can't think of anything now. Horse or something like that. I can't. Of course, uh, he, he was out recovering out college. I said, he knows how to start one. He said, when God calls you to do something, you can't do everything as a pastor. He said, so find somebody who knows how to do it. Let them do it, and you just be like herding cats, okay? <laughs> and keep them all going in the same track. And I never forgot that. I came back and immediately started trying to implement that. Um, and it's different. That's why I said you go to somebody who knows, who's been through that experience. Whatever you're going through right now. The loss of a loved one. Some of you have been through the loss of a loved one. Some of you have been through the loss of a spouse. You could be a great comfort to Ellen because she done not been there before. See what I'm saying? Help put another route. Call the down through the deck. In any, in any case, not covered by instructions. General word number 10. Uh, to salute all officers, all colors, and standards, not cased. Somebody asked me, so what do you mean not cased? When you see a flag folded, that's cased. Or when it's put in a uh, display, that's cased. But you salute that incident. It's called an incident in the Navy. I don't know what what are we talking about? This is the years. Look at that engine. It flies on the main hill of the ship. And every time you go on board ship or you come off ship, first thing you do is salute the officer to deck. And then you turn around and you salute that engine. Okay? You salute the colors every time you come on board ship, every time you go off ship. You pay your respect to that flag. That's the reason I say this publicly too. It gripes me to no end when I see people that won't stand. For the national anthem and, and flag of the United States of America. Right to me to go in. And somebody said, we, I, I, was, I was in search to put my life on the line for them to have the right to do that. And I, they have the right to do it. They have the right to protest. And I'll tell any football player right now, if you want me to help you, you stand for that flag. And if you, I'll, I'll protest with you. I may never even agree with your stand, but I'll protest with you if you'll do this. Because then I know you're serious. You want more than just 15 minutes of pain. If you will take the ball, run 99 yards down the field, and stop on the one-yard line, and put the ball down, I'll stand with you because I know you're serious. Because you know what's going to happen. You're going to get fired. Okay? But I'll stand with you because I know you're serious. Then I'll be you serious by not standing with the flag. The flag and the national anthem. I think you just want 15 minutes of pain and glory. Boy, that's going to get me in trouble, ain't it? I've been there before. Yeah. Honor those in authority over you. Hebrews 13, 7 said, Remember your leaders who have spoken God's word to you. As you carefully observe the outcome of their lives, Im imitate their faith. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. 
so that they can do this with joy and not with grief. Well, that would be unprofitable to you. Hebrews 13, 24 says, Greet all your leaders and all saints, those who are from Italy, greet you. You're required in the military to pay respect to officers and colors by saluting. In addition, you're to follow their leadership. They have your best interest at heart, even in boot camp, even if you don't believe it at that time. I'll never forget. I got out of boot camp. Me and a friend of mine went, went, went to boot camp together. They said, you can go in the Navy, you can go in the Navy as a, as a buddy, buddy system. <laughs> so we got in our way on the buddy system. We rode the same bus down. I think we got there. They put him in one division and me in another division. <laughs> that's, that's the end of that. But I remember going through boot camp and, and you know, you're talking you talk to some new officers, all officers. Well, instance, that's the, uh, that's no one in the Navy. Uh, that's when you come out of OCS, officer standing school, we're going to answer. And uh, we, I got on board the USS Putman in New Orleans, and we sailed around Florida into Bayport, Florida. And I got off the ship, and I was excited. I mean, I thought it was the first time I had been on board the ship, and uh, Putman was a destroyer, and you know, it, was, it was exciting, and I was paying attention. And so me and a friend of mine were walking by, and here comes this incident this way. And I, I was paying, I, wouldn't, I didn't see him, I was paying attention to my friend I was talking to him. Boy, he stopped me, chewed me out. Don't you know you're supposed to salute the officer? I said, aye, sir. I apologize. I'll, and who's your commanding officer? They want, you want to know my commanding officer's name on the, on the USS Putnam. I thought I was in serious trouble. He was just, he was just trying to be like, like, a, like a drill instructor in boot camp. In boot camp. Just trying to get my crawling. He did. <laughs> <laughs> he did. But it's respect. It's respect. That's why, that's why officers and enlisted men do not fraternize. Uh, I have a friend. I would call his name, you would probably know him. He uh, was in the U.S. Navy. He was a corpsman. And he started dating a pharmacist who happened to be an officer. And this is people who don't date officers. What are the rules? So he was discharged. She wasn't, but he was. You follow orders. That's what I'm saying to you. Somebody said, well, that don't make any sense. There's some things in the Word of God that some people think don't make any sense. It still don't change it. It's still what God says. Amen? Well, I'm, I'm having fun with this mess. I don't know about y'all, but I'm having fun with it. Bring back a lot of my military. Number 11, and I'll close with this one. To be especially watchful at night and during the time of your challenging. Now, challenging means when, when somebody comes on your post, you're supposed to ask them to identify themselves. Sometimes it's with a password, sometimes it's not, but it, it depends on what kind of situation you're in. You have an adversary who's seeking to destroy you. The devil is not playing games, folks. He's out to destroy the souls of men, and he can wreak, wreak havoc in the, in the uh, Christian's life. Don't give place to him any time. Challenge him every time you see him. Now don't challenge him in your own power. You don't have the power. But challenge him in the power of God that God gave you. And you will have to flee. Recognize that when it's difficult to see clearly in times of great conflict, he will appear as the right way, as an angel of light. He's crafty and he'll do all he can to deceive you into believing his lies. Be especially careful during these times. During what? At night time. And during times of challenging when you're facing opposition. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because you have to say the devil is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour, who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, our military personnel, when they entered service, they memorized those 11 general orders. I don't think it'd be a bad idea if you got a copy of this message I got a copy of those 11 general orders from a church. Put them up on your refrigerator. Put them on your sun visor. And remember, you're always on duty. You have got, there's only one person right now that I'm thinking about that I know has been relieved of his duty. Howard, yeah, Howard Hagwood has been relieved of his duty. Again. And he's enjoying his rewards. He served faithfully and served well. He's enjoying his rewards. That's when you're relieved of your duty. Is when God calls you home.
And you want to hear the real, real then, my, the real then, I'm, I'm good to make the sermon. You say, faithful Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Get the bad eyes closed. No one's looking around. Let me just say this to you. Ladies and gentlemen, word I believe God's given to this church, which we carry out. They're not in a picnic, they're not playing games. They're involved in the greatest warfare possible. It's time for God's army to save born again people of God. To pay attention to follow orders. Mark 6 15 says, Then he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. I mean, are you going to be shadow without you in the Lord's army? You've been saved, you know you're saved, and you know you're in that army. It's word testimony, would you lift up your hand? I know it, preacher, I know it. Thank you. God bless you. Very quickly now. If you could not raise your hand, you're not sure. You never enlisted. You never said, God, be merciful for me, a sinner. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me. Would you let me pray for you? Would you just slip up your hand and say, Lord, say, preacher, pray for me. I'm not country, not embarrassed. You're going to do that. If you're listening at home, you recognize you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray for you. I pray you pray that sinner's prayer. Recognize that the only means of salvation is to be said, but there's a fire escape. He's more than that, but he is that too. And that's Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can spare you from the heart from the of hell. And he'll give you an eternal life and, and reward you upon this earth that you can't even begin to imagine. So would you pray that prayer? Let me know. Send me an email. Let me know. Christian, these general orders are for all born again, children of God, enlisted in the Lord's army. Perhaps this morning, one of those orders has spoken to your heart. You say, you say, Lord, I've been neglecting that one. I, 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 I got tangled too much with the world. I, I, I've not properly been taking care of my post. And God spoke to your heart about it. Would you come to this altar and say, Lord, help me strengthen me in this area. Help me to bear, one, bear my comrades' burdens. Help me to take care of somebody else's back. God, I will be that kind of servant, that kind of warrior. Would you stand to your feet and have a Father? I pray that you have your own way in this invitation. That your people, all by your name, will be responsive to your Holy Spirit. I pray souls would be saved. That people would cry out to God from their homes and wherever they're watching from. That they'd be saved. And I pray God's church, the army of the Lord, will become all it can be for your honor and your glory. May your people follow your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Head your bowed, eyes closed. Right now, you come. Say, Lord, I need help in this area. I want to be that kind of faithful warrior. I want to be that person. That's it. Come on. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. God's dealing with your heart. Now's the time to come. May God help you. We want. Would you come? Oh, she's playing all God's day. God's day with your heart. Children said, 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to take this a minute. We'll have some share time. But Dale brought me this. Asked me if I'd read it. And uh, I'm going to, but I've got to put my glasses on. 